In recent weeks, UNRWA's force has been asked some telling questions about its readiness and commitment to the challenge of bringing peace to South Sudan. Sometimes stretched to the limit, the military arm of the mission has expended considerable effort in fulfilling its mandate to protect innocent civilians in imminent danger. Following the violent outbreak of fighting in Juba from the 7th and 8th of July, which lasted some five days, but which still goes on in pockets around the country, many have asked, is the force up to the challenge? What did they do during the conflict? And indeed, some have even accused them of not being up to the task. Lieutenant General Andiki is the UNMIS Force Commander, and we sat down with him to find out what the true picture was. He spoke about force readiness, the challenges the force faced, steps taken to protect the over 200,000 internally displaced persons in POC and related sites across the country that his force is responsible for protecting, and dealt with accusations of force failure to act to protect women, amongst others. First of all, let me tell you that I am the, um, my name is Lieutenant General Johnson Ndieki. I am the force commander of UNIMIS. I've been here for the last uh, two months, and the period of which I assess the situation in South Sudan to be uh, currently relatively calm, but very fragile because of the uh, situation that it develops within minutes, as it were, in the last uh, few weeks. UNMIS has got a mandate. The mandate is given by the Security Council, and currently we are dealing with the uh, UN Security Council Resolution 2252 of uh, August uh, 2015, which gives us the first mandate of uh, protection of civilians. Uh, when situations arise that particular areas are declared war zones, or as it were, areas that are uh, not approachable, then it becomes for difficult for us to be able to carry out our mandate. We feel for the people in those areas. We have the presence in those areas, but our presence is restricted, and therefore this may look as though the, we are not able to reach all the people as we would have liked. And therefore, my wish is to call the government of South Sudan to declare those areas uh, safe as soon as possible, especially for the humanitarian uh, agencies to be able to move in and the force to assist uh, the people in whatever form so that they can come to normalcy. Uh, the first responsibility of uh, protection of civilians in any given country like South Sudan is the responsibility of the government in place. And therefore the government of South Sudan has the responsibility to protect the civilians. However, where we have civilians who are uh, under imminent danger and uh, require our protection, our force has always been there to do that. And we are doing that in several uh, areas that we have, uh, the, the people of South Sudan have run into and we protect those areas using all means that we have, according to uh, the authorization, authorization that we have been given by the Security Council. And it will not uh, be wise not to say that we have all the necessary uh, required force that can be able to protect the people of South Sudan who are in imminent danger. However, this has stretched the capacity that we have. The capacity we have cannot be able to cover all the areas, and the soldiers have the rules of engagement. Within the rules of engagement, it explains how to use force, including lethal force. We are able to use including lethal force to protect the civilians under amendment danger. I therefore, I call upon uh, the government of South Sudan to be able uh, to assist their civil population as we do uh, assist them uh, in the current scenario. Any sexual violence to any human being, be it a citizen of South Sudan or any other citizen of the world, is a very serious crime. And there is a crime that can constitute war crime or crime against humanity. And there is a tribal in any international law. And there is a very serious crime. I can say that during this crisis of the 7th to, to 12th, yes, UNMIS recorded incidences 
of uh, sexual violence. This is after the combat that the people who ran to the POC sites were able to narrate what they went through during the combat. And after we realized that the, the crimes were being committed on them, including those who were going to venture outside the POC sites uh, to correct the fire good, going to the market and other areas. We have increased patrols outside the, 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 the routes that they take to the various centers to correct the fire good. Uh, the centers that they go to correct their, their things from the market. And as a mission, and especially uh, me as the force commander, I've taken up the issue with the, the SPRA leadership who have actually taken action and assured that whoever might have committed the crimes will be investigated and will be brought to book. They have actually informed us that they have formed a general court martial, which will be trying those who have perpetrated crimes against the federal citizens. And we look forward to whatever outcome that will come out of their investigations. I continue to urge them to ask their uh, soldiers or the security agencies to restrain and know that these are the people of South Sudan. They require comfort, they require to be protected, and the government forces must protect them as we do our part uh, to protect the people of South Sudan. We were not directly engaged in uh, any in the confrontation. However, we were caught in the crossfire. In the crossfire, what I mean is that f uh, shots were being fired over at Unimis uh, between the two warring factions. And in the process, actually, Unimis uh, lost two peacekeepers. And uh, at this time also I take the opportunity to send our condolences to the uh, Chinese uh, peacekeepers that we lost, to their families and everybody, and continue to urge that uh, UNIMIS is here to protect the people of South Sudan and to assist the peace process. We are not here for any party or to be able to engage any party in whatever confrontation. And uh, UNIMI should never and should never be a target to any of the parties because we are here for peace and we are here to assist the people of South Sudan and the parties to take forward the peace that they have signed. <laughs> Uh, the purpose of the patrol is to carry out the mandate, that is protection of the civilians who are vulnerable. Uh, at this juncture, the patrols are going on programmed uh, patrols, which is to cover the women and the children that are going to the various centers, including collection of firewood to the market, and to be able to find outside the POC for fresh air. That's why they are outside here. And the patrols, when they are particular timings, they cover them. They are able to cover them as they, they move around. All the POC sites across the country will do the same. The order is the same for them to be able to do that so that they can also allow the population in the POC sites to venture outside from the POC site other than remaining there as uh, prisoners. This is 24-7, uh, 24, uh, 24 hours uh, on a daily basis. However, during the night they are reduced because most of the people are inside the POC. So we only do the security patrols outside during the night, but during the day it is continuous and especially in the morning, lunchtime and in the evening when the majority of the people are moving.